Fine, thank you. Details. Thank you. Fine. Okay. This is the Fortis Hospital where I'm working. It's a quarterly care hospital in New Delhi, uh, in NCR. I have nothing to disclose. We all know that obesity is one of the important uh, risk factors for diabetes. And I come from, how do I, do I have a pointer? I come from this part of the world, and you can see that in the Southeast Asia, the number of diabetic patients are huge. Despite the fact that US has an endemic for obesity, they still have lesser diabetic patients than Southeast Asia. And in the next 25 years, while the US diabetic population is going to go only up to one and a half times, in the Southeast Asia, the number of diabetic patients in the next 25 years is going to be doubled. And, another, and this has to be kept in mind that India is the diabetic capital of the world. And we Asians have a characteristic phenotype of a low BMI with central obesity. And for the same weight and same height, Asian Indians have higher body fat contents than Caucasians, and this fat is a visceral fat. And this is the metabolically active fat which leads, leads to diabetes and leads to cardiovascular risk. And this correlates more with diabetic. And this fact has to be kept in mind when we design our surgeries for diabetes in Asian Indian patients. Now, we all know that this, this, this article from Pori, who would have thought that a, a surgery can be a permanent cure for diabetes mellitus? And this uh, huge content from this uh, uh, patient population proved that diabetes can be cured in 85.4 percent of patients. And the SOS study showed that after surgery, the cure rate of diabetes is higher as compared to the control, not only at two years and 10 years, and the incidence of diabetes mellitus also, new cases also, has decreased after surgery. And this has been confirmed subsequently by so many uh, investigators that bariatric surgery leads to higher resolution of diabetes as compared to the medical therapy in, in uh, randomized controlled trials. So we can very safely say that bariatric surgery leads to permanent remission of diabetes mellitus. But diabetic, bariatric surgery is a cluster of surgeries. There may be restrictive surgeries, malabsorptive surgeries, and combined surgery. And we have the data to prove that the restrictive surgeries have less resolution of diabetes than patients who undergo malabsorptive surgery. And the surgery is dose-related. The resolution is dose-related. The more portion of GI tract you bypass, the more is the resolution. So BPD has more resolution than bypass. And these two combined have more resolution than uh, restrictive procedures. So we have now an enteroinsular axis by which we can do intestinal rearrangement and which can lead to remission of diabetes, which is mediated through the hormones. And what are we doing basically by the bypass? We are firstly excluding the duodenum and the proximal jejunum from the food stream, and therefore we are causing early delivery of the ingested articles, uh, uh, the food into the jejunum and also into the hindgut. It is this alteration in the in the movement of the food which leads to hormone secretions from the proximal intestine, the incretins and the anti-incretins, and basically diabetes, as we know now, is an imbalance between incretins and anti-incretins. If the incretins are uh, more, then the patient is non-diabetic. If anti-incretins are more, it leads to insulin resistance, beta cell depletion, and ultimately diabetes. So this fact has to be kept in mind when we design surgeries for for diabetes, particularly in lower BMI patients. And the diabetic surgery submitted to Rome in 2007 made a very clear-cut statement that gastric bypass may be a non-primary alternative for inadequately controlled type 2 diabetes mellitus with a BMI of 30 to 35. This was a very important deviation from the 1991 NIH recommendation, which said that with diabetes, the BMI should be more than 35. So this, perhaps, statement has led to a lot of new developments, and we have to see how they, they pertain to the Asians. And even the International Diabetes Federation has said that patients with BMI more than 30 who are not well controlled by drugs are candidates for bariatric surgery. So coming back to Indian population, the WHO has said that in Indian population, one is obese at a BMI of 25, which for Caucasians is a BMI more than 30. And even the abdominal waist circumference, which predisposes them to diabetes and to cardiovascular risk, is in men and Indians, it's more than 90 centimeters as compared to 102 centimeters in the West. And in female, Indian females, it is 80 centimeters as compared to 88 centimeters in the Caucasians. So when we, in extra, when we infer from these recommendations of the Diabetes Surgical Summit 
and the IDF recommendations, we know that if a bariatric surgery, a, 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 a surgery for diabetes can be performed for a BMI more than 30 in the West, in Indian patient, it falls to BMI more than 27.5. So this basically is the crux of the matter. A patient with a BMI more than 27.5 is a patient who doesn't have much weight to lose. So we have to design special surgeries for them so that we, we, we cause remission of diabetes depending on the theory of the foregut and the hindgut without much weight loss. And this we will discuss later. So coming to standard bariatric procedure for more than BMI more than 35 in Asia and in India, the band is almost out. For the last seven, eight years, I don't think in India anybody has done a band, though it is still prevalent in some of the European countries and Australia. Sleeve gastrectomy has become the most common procedure performed for bariatric surgery and for patients of diabetes in the, in the last, uh, last decade. In India, there are no takers for BPD because these patients have a very high degree of malnutrition in Indian population who are mostly vegetarian and where the protein source comes from the cereals and not from animal protein and whose oral daily intake is 50 to 60 grams of protein. So BPD is not a, not a consideration at all. And gastric bypass used to be the most popular bypass in India till few years back, but there have been recent developments in changing of the procedures, which you'll see later. So we have enough data to say comparing uh, LSG and uh, gastric bypass, that gastric bypass patient tends to do better in resolution of diabetes, though at a slightly higher complication rate. And this is the Indian data, and Indian data also our investigators have compared bypass and sleeve, and here also diabetes resolution in bi gastric bypass RNY is faster and more sustained as compared to the sleeve gastrectomy. But in India what has happened is that mini gastric bypass or the single anastomosis gastric bypass has come up in a big way in the last six, seven years. And this has come up because of, in which we fashion a long narrow tube and do a polya two type anastomosis with a loop of uh, intestine rather than uh, roux and Y. And the popularity has come because of the technical simplicity. Gastrinostomy has been a very favored operation, very common operation for decades. And there are fewer anastomotic leaks, fewer sites of internal herniations. And this has replaced RNY in some parts of the world in which India perhaps remains the most prominent one, where now mini gastric bypass or single gastric bypass is the most common bypass performed, particularly in the northern India. Though some of we surgeons have serious you know, reservations about the popularity of mini gastric bypass because the length of the bypass limb is so far not standardized. People use 150 centimeters to 300 centimeters. There's significant malabsorption particularly protein malabsorption. And, you know, when a, a, a low-quality serial protein is, is replaced, many of these patients we have seen coming back with serious protein malnutrition. The long-term neutral deficiency is yet to be assessed because we don't have long-term data of meniagastic bypass. Significant symptomatic bile reflux remains a problem. Anastomotic ulcers are seen more often than RNY. And ECL with malignancy has to be investigated to see that this bile reflux is not causing... Uh, esophageal malignancy. So these are the results of one anastomosis gastric bypass, and you can see that the resolution is almost as good of diabetes as in Ruan Y bypass. So in the short term, for the resolution of diabetes, a single anastomosis bypass is as good as Ruan bypass. And these are the Indian data, particularly coming from Dr. Kuller, who has done some pioneering work in North India, because his population tends to eat more meat as compared to the Central and South Asia. So he has really adopted meniagastric bypass in a big way and has reported the results. Now coming from morbid obese patients to patients with less than 35 BMI. Now when we treat these patients for diabetes, we have to keep these things in mind that it is important to demonstrate that type two diabetes resolution is equal in patients with BMI less than 35 than more than 35. Because so far we have to we have, to have long term data to say because these patients have different weight and weight may be an important consideration in resolution of type two diabetes in the long way. So we have to ensure, and we have to identify predictors of poor response in these patients with BMI less than 35 so that we avoid diabetic surgery in these patients and these patients are duration of diabetes more than 10 years, high insulin requirement, low baseline insulin, low C-peptide and high HbA1c. So we have to see that we do not take up uh, patients who are not likely to respond because they are smaller in weight 
then the standard recommendation, 1991 recommendation of the National Institute of Health. So this is the data here, and this is a recent study in 2015, a meta-analysis of level one, level two evidence, seven RCTs, 818 patients, and each of these studies found that surgical intervention was superior to the medical treatment in terms of HbA1c and glycemic control, and the odd ratio for surgical superiority was 22 in patients with BMI 30 to 35 when we compare them to uh, medical treatment. Similarly, Rubino during diabetic surgery summit uh, two uh, reported in 190 patients, again level one and level two evidence of RCTs, and all 11 RCTs showed surgery to be superior to medical treatment in patients with a BMI 30 to 35, and the odd ratio were more than 10, except in one surgery, which was LAGB. And we know that LAGB, the diabetic's response rate is much lower as compared to sleeve and, and uh, gastric bypass. So here is the world data to show the safety and the remission of uh, metabolic surgery patients with BMI less than 35, which is almost equal to BMI more than 35. And this is the Indian data to show that, you know, these patients who undergo uh, gastric bypass have a high rate of remission, which is comparable to patients with BMI more than 35. So in patients with BMI more than 35, the procedures performed are RNY, LSG, OAGB, LAGB. But in patients with BMI 30 to 35, or more than 27.5 in India, uh, the, uh, the recommended surgeries are RNY and LSG. LAGB and MOGB are not to be considered for diabetes in patients whose BMI is less than 35 because they will lead to a lot of protein and malnutrition. And what is more important is diabetic surgery for patients with BMI less than 30 in the West or less than 27.5 in India or in Asia, where we know that special surgery has to be designed, which do not cause weight loss, but which use the data available on the on the change in the alteration of the uh, change in the alteration of the GI tract. So bariatric surgeries are not surgeries for BMI less than 30 in West or less than 27.5 in India or Southeast Asia, because we are cause, we want only metabolic surgeries, surgeries which do not cause weight loss, as these patients do not have much weight to lose, and we have to use a disease modifier which can improve diabetes independent of the weight loss effect. And what are these surgeries? Rubino has described duodenal bypass, which was very effective in relieving the diabetes. And Deepala has described ileal interposition, where 107 centimeters of ileum is interposed just distal to the DJ flexor so that undigested food enters the ileum. So according to the Heingart theory, where as we discussed, undigested food is delivered to the intestine, then incretins are increased and that leads to resolution of diabetes. And then he described a second procedure in which this ileum was interposed just at the duodenum so that it combines the foregut theory as well as the hindgut theory, which makes it a stronger procedure for cure of diabetes. And the data is, this is the data from my friend, Dr. Ogale from Hyderabad, and he has, he has done a very pioneering work in India on uh, ileal interposition and uh, uh, diverted sleeve, and has shown extremely good results. He is also part of this international study, uh, you know, along with uh, Turkey, and you know, the combined data has shown very good and very impressive resolution of diabetes in patients whose BMI is less than 30 or less than 27.5. So when we adopt these diabetic surgeries for low BMI patient, a very important consideration is safety because these are not the uh, bariatric patients, these are not the heavyweight patients who otherwise have a lot of complications and they would otherwise naturally also, their lifespan is shortened. These are otherwise healthier patients and surgery should be absolutely safe. And these risk factors should be identified so that we avoid these surgeries, these surgeries for diabetes in low BMI patients. We have to be extra careful about that. And you know, there should be a zero mortality. Ideal patient selection for diabetic surgery is very important. They should be difficult to control diabetes. The duration of diabetes should be minimum five years. They should, their diabetes should not be adequately controlled, HbA1c more than eight. They sh may have microvascular complications. The fasting C-peptide should be more than one nanogram per ml, and the exclusion criteria are 
significant renal disease, significant cardiac disease, significant hepatic illness, and the outcome should be diabetes remission. Earlier, there were a lot of confusion about what is remission of diabetes, but now the IDF has very clearly defined the diabetes remission, which is complete or partial. Partial remission is when the diabetes is remitted without drugs more than one year, and the glucose level remains more than 125, and complete remission is when the diabetes is remitted for five years without drugs with blood sugar level less than, uh, less than 100. The important features to be, to be seen are that surgical efficacy is much more 80% in surgical therapy for diabetes in lean diabetic patients. The only limiting factor is one-time cost of the procedure. Patients do not mind spending slowly, slowly over the years, but when it comes to surgery in India where there is no insurance coverage for the diabetic surgery or the bariatric surgery, patients find it difficult to spend a one-time one one cost. So to conclude, Chairman, sir, evidence has shown that metabolic surgery has helped type 2 diabetic patients to achieve glycemic control more effectively than intensive medical therapy at one year. It has resolved or improved type 2 diabetes and other obesity-related cardiovascular complications for up to five years. It has reduced medication use for type 2 diabetes mellitus. It is more efficient than usual care of prevention of type 2 diabetes in patients with obesity. At 15 years, the risk of cardiovascular death has decreased at 15 years. The morbidity model rates are similar to common general procedures. Today, in an expert bariatric center with high volume, the morbidity of bariatric surgery should not be more than that of a surgery of laparoscopic surgery of the gallbladder or a hysterectomy, and it is an acceptable treatment option. Thank you very much. This is my team which helped me in making this presentation. Thanks.